Yeah, g'day folks. I was pulling apart the aquaponics system this morning, doing a bit of clean and tidy up. So I thought in this second video I'd show you a few extra bits and pieces that I've got that go with the, the system. So what you can see there is my tiny weeny little pump. Uh, it's quite a small pump. And uh, it's supposed to turn over a thousand litres uh, an hour, but I've turned mine down because it was flooding the grow beds. But what I did notice um, was on the front of that pump is a little filter pad. So I forgot to mention that in the first video. Um, now it was pretty feral. I was surprised how much muck that little filter pad had actually picked up. So that's a little extra bit to the system that I hadn't mentioned, which of course went with the filter box that we've got on the end of the grow bed here which is much bigger than I made. I haven't bothered to clean that filter box out yet. Um, it doesn't look too feral mostly. What's happened is it's grown mould. Um, now as it turns out the nylon cover has turned out to be a bit of a filter as well. You can probably see the muck there. I'll scrape that off a bit later. Um, but yeah I thought I'd mention that. I'll also mention um, that sometime in this same clip um, the battery backup system I've got in case we have a power strike or a power blackout because these things won't, these systems don't last long periods of time without that constant filtration going. You'll kill your fish stony dead. So here's another little bits and bobs thing for the aquaponics system. Um, in the first clip, uh, Christine, a friend of mine, uh, made mention of some iron chelite, chelate, so I thought I'd show you that. <clears throat> uh, I tend to mix it up fairly slowly, so I've got five litres worth of tank water here. Um, and here, oh good, I don't even have to grab it, is the iron chelate. So it's got a little mixing spoon in it. Three spoons will go in the top of that. Uh, be well mixed up and just poured straight onto my grow beds. Uh, like I say, I tend to do it slowly because I just don't want to risk shocking the fish somehow. Um, here's the section about the backup power in case we lose mains. So you can see, very simple, nice little battery that cost me less than a hundred bucks. Alligator clips go onto uh, one of the car plugs. That'll take any of those 12 volt car style connectors. Uh, this is an inverter. So this normally is what gives you your 240 volts. So normally what happens is I simply, let's see if I can do this with one hand. A little tricky, a little tricky Vicky. Okay, so that just plugs straight in like that. Now the reason I struggled to do that for you was to show you that there is no power light on my inverter at the moment. But I do know that it works fine. So what happened, I was a tad distracted by a, a husky fight in the middle of the first recording and I clipped the alligator clips around on the wrong polarity and I've obviously done that inverter over. So I can't see that it's got where I'd get into that little fella terribly easy. Um, it does come with an extra few so I might have a bit of a tinker. Yeah, it costs 40 bucks to replace the inverter if I need to. Uh, the other element is this little guy over here, that's the recharger. So once you finish with your, using your battery, you plug that back into mains power when you've got it back on. There's your two little alligator clips. Uh, they go onto the battery where you saw the other pair. And that'll recharge your battery for you without worrying about overfilling it and burning it and all that sort of silly nonsense. Um, so the whole system cost me less than 100 bucks, which, uh, sorry, less than 200 bucks which I was pretty happy about to be honest. That's a good cheap system um, and I can cart it away and use it when I go camping because it's nice and light as well and I'm pretty mindful that otherwise it's going to sit out the back in the shed as a redundant power system that I may not need for another three years. Alright so that's the $200 not quite patent painted um, battery backup system for your small scale aquaponics. Okay guys, remember I said I was going to have a pop at that fuse, hopefully it's what's broken. I had a look through the instruction book and I've got to say, um, it may as well be written in Chinese, it told me to get an electrician, 
which I'm not real keen on doing for a $40 inverter. So I had a look around. There's two screws on the fan end here, and there's a screw here. There's also a screw here, but while I was looking at this, I noticed, and you can see I already have my trusty handy dandy screwdriver ready to go, that this unscrews. Oh, look what just came out there. And if you hold it up to the light, I can actually see, although you won't be able to, that that fuse has popped, which is exactly what it's meant to do. So what we'll do is we'll pop the new fuse in. If I can actually get it open. Look at that. The screwdriver came in good for something after all. And we'll just pop that back in. Push that back through. Screw it back into place. And I reckon Bob's your uncle. Cheers guys. Okay, and there's the proof of the pudding. You can see the green light near the power source near the power outlet there is on yay the buffoon actually got it right so there's the battery hooked up and that saved me 40 bucks you beauty